In this video, we will take a look at how you can create this blood staining effect. <laughs> As you can see, when the character gets squashed, more blood particles collide with the ground, and this stains the ground with blood, making the level progressively bloodier. First, before we make any effect, you should first be able to create the effect in the editor. This will give you a good understanding of the steps you need to code the effect, and it makes it much more clear what you have to do when you get into the coding phase. For this example, let's run through the steps needed to make the effect in the editor, then we will briefly take a look at how they translate it into code. So I'm just going to start with a new scene and set up some stuff. So in my blank scene, I've just set up some tile maps, a wall tile map and a ground tile map. The ground tile map just has a order in layer of 5 to make it appear in front of the wall. After you've set up your tile map, there's some things you need to add to it. Over on our ground tile map, let's first add a tile map collider. And then a composite collider. Let's set the composite operation to merge. And this basically just combines all the colliders into one object for performance. The last thing you'll need is a sprite mask. Change the sprite source to support the renderers, and it should auto-target the ground tile map. Now we can move on to the steps on how to create the sprite and make it mask within our tile maps. The first thing you'll want to do is to create a game object. And then you'd want to add a sprite renderer so that we can pick our sprite. I'm going to use Kenny's particles. This one looks pretty good. Then I'm going to give it a dark red, as well as lower the opacity slightly. And then you'll want to change your mask interaction to visible inside of mask. And change the order and layer to above your ground. Now that your blood splatter is done, you can see that it will only ever appear within your ground tile map. And it's masked out so that it doesn't appear on the walls. Now you can see that when I duplicate it, it will start stacking and the effect will start to build and become more and more obvious. And as you can see, if I were to just spam it here, your hierarchy gets pretty messy. So we probably want to parent this to the ground in our script so that when we start spamming these, it's organized and doesn't get too messy in the hierarchy. We should also give it some variety. As you can see, if we were to just spam this right now, it looks a bit boring. So we'll probably want to give it some random size or random sprites. Now that we know how to make the blood splatter, let's take a look at how to make it spawn. For that, I'm going to drag out a blood splatter particle prefab that we made. And here you can see that collision is set up so that every time the particle hits the tile map, it bounces. And you can set this particle system up to however you want it to be. The important part is that on collisions, you check send collision messages and make sure that when you test your particle, it can collide with your ground. Then you also need a script to send messages to. For this project, we use Blood Explosion to receive the send collision messages. So with all that done, let's quickly take a look at how it can translate into code. Starting with our Blood Explosion script, this is the function that receives the send collision messages on particle collision. Very basically, it just stores all the collision points within our particle system when it plays. And then this script goes through every single collision point and spawns the blood stain at each point. Over on this function, you can see that it does what we went through in the editor earlier. We create a game object, then we add a sprite renderer, change the sprite to a random one in a list of sprites, change the color of it, change the mask to visible inside of mask, change the sorting layer and sorting order, then we parent it to our ground, and set the position and location to the point it collided with. So that's pretty much all there is to making this effect. Once again, if you want the full step-by-step -step and the explanations that they code, you can find it in the blog post in the description. And with that, thank you for watching.